We're talking about NumPy. Uh, we're going to go a little bit more in depth on some of the features and functionality of NumPy here. So in our notebook, I went ahead and typed up some of the code in advance to save a little bit of time. We're going to talk about first placeholder arrays. And a lot of times what you have in the data environment is you know how big the data you're going to work with is, but you just don't have it yet. Meaning maybe you have to calculate something and you're going to populate a new array with the outcome of those calculations. For NumPy to work, we actually have to set up an array to hold the place for all that data to live. And there are several placeholder arrays that NumPy has built in. They have a MPy zeros, NumPy ones, NumPy i, and a NumPy empty. So we'll go ahead and get a look at each one of these. I'll run that cell and then I'll just call them each in turn. So the A0, as you might expect, it makes a array full of zeros and I told it to be five by five. So a two dimensional array, five rows, five columns. I did pretty much the same thing with the ones. And so, yep, like the zeros, we get an array of ones instead of zeros now, five by five. It also has this specialized I array. And what that does is fill an array with zeros, but on the diagonal, it puts ones. And if we want to offset it a bit, we can if I set a K value here. All right, so this is going to offset it instead of starting at uh, the zero position for the diagonal, it's going to start at the one. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see it's pushed over towards the right. All right, the last one we're going to look at is this empty. And essentially what empty does is it's supposed to mimic uh, zeros. So it's putting data in and it's supposed to be putting in all zeros. But you can see that, oh, in many cases, it's just very, very close to zero. Okay, we're going to take a look at mathematical operations next. And to do this, I'm just going to make up some data, a range. Not very imaginative, but useful to demonstrate what we're going to be doing. So one of the most powerful features of NumPy is this idea of vectorized mathematical operations. So if I try this with a Python list, I'm going to get an error. But with NumPy, when I run this, you can see that, okay, it goes through. And for each element, it squares that element. You can also do this by merging two different arrays as long as they have the same dimensionality. All right, so the same number of rows and columns. So I'll make the B array, okay, and then I will just subtract one from the other. Okay, so as we expect, we're going to get a bunch of zeros there. And then related to this idea of standard math is this idea of Boolean math, so true or false values. And uh, to do this, I'm going to first reset a value in A. Okay, so first row, second column is going to now become a, a 1. And then I'm going to compare B to A like this. Okay, so we can see that this evaluates to true everywhere except for where I changed uh, the center value in A to 1. All right, and this is called a Boolean mask, and sometimes it's used... Uh, to facilitate operations just where some condition is true. All right, before I summarize, I'm going to show you one more thing, and that's the NumPy linear space. And this is going to be useful a lot of times when we're uh, trying to do some kind of data analysis. We're actually going to use this uh, to create an overlay. So it's going to be MP lin space. And then we're going to tell it where we want to start from. All right, where we want to go to, and then how many steps in between. So I'll just put in 20. And then when we call it, we see that, okay, it starts at negative 4, and moving across a row and down through the array, it basically divides up that interval into 20 equally sized segments. Okay, so now we'll just go ahead and take a quick look at summarizing data with some of the built-in functions. And to do this, I'm going to recreate my range 3 by 5. And then I'm going to get the sum of 
arrange. All right, so when we do this, what we get is it adds up every single value in the array. So it doesn't do it row wise, it doesn't do it column wise. If I want to do something like that, well then yes, I can sort of tell it that I just want the first row or the second row or the first column or the second column, something like that. But otherwise, it just looks at every element in the array and, and adds it up. Uh, NumPy also has built-in functions for the mean, the max, the min, standard deviation, all sorts of the common uh, statistical functions that you can uh, imagine. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you in this introduction to NumPy is the random module. Okay, and so I can either shortcut it and import from the NumPy library random like this set that to a variable okay that's oftentimes pretty convenient otherwise when i want to access the random module i'm going to have to start with mp.random all right so this is just a little bit more compact okay and then i'm just going to generate values from the standard normal distribution in an array three by five like that all right so the standard normal in case you need a refresher on that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So most of the values we see in here should be somewhere between uh, negative one and one, all right, with some values uh, exceeding that. I hope that helps with NumPy.